Hello and welcome to another Zoom tutorial. Today, we're looking at how to secure our classroom so unwanted people won't join us and we can control what is happening, what is shared, and how the session is run. We're gonna be looking at some of the options that should be preset before you start a lesson. And also we will look at some of the features that should be set up during your online lesson. Most of the settings are set up from the Zoom website. So first thing you need to do is to head over to zoom.us, log into your account and click on my account. Once you've accessed your account, click on settings. First thing that you need to turn off is participants video. Make sure that participants video is on off. This option will turn the participants video from the get go, but participants will be able to turn it back on. Later on in the video clip, I'll show you how to keep the participants video off for the duration of the meeting. Next option that should be off is join before host. Make sure it's off. We're going to disable use personal meetings uh, when scheduling a meeting. We're also going to disable personal meeting ID when starting an instant meeting. The next option that we're going to look at is only authenticated users can join meetings. This option will only work if both you and your students are under your school Zoom account. If on the other hand, you or your students are not under one Zoom school account, then this feature will not work. I'll demonstrate what will happen if you turn it on. Notice that I cannot join this meeting because I haven't been signed in. So if you and your students have accounts under one school, then this feature will enable only your students to join your lesson. Next features are related to the passwords. I encourage you to use the passwords and turn both require a password when scheduling the new meeting, also require the password for instant meeting, and also require a password for personal meetings. Be careful though that sometimes passwords are not the best way to secure your classrooms because when you send out invitation, the password is embedded in the invitation. So what a person can do, they can share this with anybody else and they will be able to join your lesson. So passwords are good things, but they will not necessarily protect you from unwanted visitors. The next feature that you need to turn on is mute participants upon entry. Make sure this feature is on. This will mute the microphones of the people that enter your room. There is one more step you need to take so that participants won't be able to unmute themselves. This is not enough. This will only mute them when they enter. Then they can unmute themselves. So later on in this tutorial, we'll have a look at what it is that you will need to do to disable participants to unmute themselves. We'll have a look at this later, but for now, just make sure that mute participants upon entry is on. Our chat can be disabled when you run the meeting or it can be turned off before you even start the meeting. I encourage you to disable both chat and private chat. The next feature that you need to turn on is allow host to put attendees on hold. Make sure it's on. This will give you as a host an ability to kick people out of your Zoom meeting. It will not necessarily do that, but it's important that you know that you have this ability. The next very important feature is screen sharing. Make sure that only host can share the content. Now you can change that later on, but from the get go, it's important that only you as a host can share your screen. Disable desktop a screen share for users. Turn this feature on for extra security. Annotation feature should be switched off. If annotation feature is on, your participants will be able to literally draw while you're sharing the screen. I've never needed this option. It only creates disturbance and allows students to interfere with their flow of your lesson. So make sure that annotation feature is off. Whiteboard, again, turn it off to make sure that you have a total control over what is happening during the lesson and who can share what. Remote control, keep it off. Nonverbal feedback is not harmful prefer to leave it on if I want to get some answers from the students. Allow remove participants to rejoin. This is when we remove some of our misbehaving participants. They won't be able to join back. Remote support should be off as well. We don't want anyone to control anything remotely. 
The next feature, identify guest participants in the meeting or webinar, again, will only work if you and your students operate on the one school Zoom account. The next feature that you need to turn on is waiting room. This is a really good feature to control who is joining your classroom. I have an in-depth tutorial on waiting room. I will leave the link in the description, but what it does before participants can join your actual meeting, they'll be put in a waiting room and then you as a host can either invite them or admit them or remove them from the waiting room. A very helpful feature, make sure it's on and all participants are put into the waiting room. Make sure that you follow me along and you turn on all turned off all the features that I've mentioned before. So what are we going to do now? I'm going to schedule the meeting and show you some of the things that you as a host will need to do during the meeting. Once your settings are ready, it's important to schedule your meetings using Zoom website because it gives you more flexibility and more options as to how your meeting will be run. As usual, enter the topic, time and date. And when you scroll down, make sure that your meeting ID is automatically generated. Make sure that you have the password. Video for host is on. Video for participant is off. Meeting options, make sure that enable join before host is off. Mute participants on entry is on. Enable waiting room is on. Only authenticated users can join. If your account and accounts of your students are managed by your school, I would strongly encourage to click this on. If you're using your personal account or if you're using your school account and your students are using their personal account, then this feature will not work. Right, so now we're gonna save and start the meeting. My meeting is started here. There are a couple of things you need to do before any participants join. Make sure that you click on manage participants and click on more. First thing you need to make sure that mute participants on entry is ticked on. The next thing that we need to turn off is allow participants to unmute themselves. This has to be turned off. Next thing that we want to check is that allow participants to rename themselves is not on and put participants in waiting room on entry is on. So initially you should have two ticks next to mute participants on entry and put participants in waiting room on entry. I'm going to be using this iPad to demonstrate what it will look like from the student's perspective when they join your meeting where the settings are set up in this way. First thing that I will be prompted to enter once I've joined the meeting is the password. The password that you as a host has shared with me in advance. So after I've entered the password, I've been put in the waiting room and this is what it looks like. It looks like a white screen and there's literally nothing I can do as a participant before host admits me into the meeting. Now from the host perspective, if I navigate towards the manage participants, I can now see that there is one student waiting in the waiting room and as a host, I can do three things. The first thing I can admit the participant, which will take him or her into my lesson. The second thing I can do is remove this participant. Now be careful, if you remove a person from the waiting room, he or she won't be able to join you again. The third thing I can do is send a message. As a host, I can message everyone in the waiting room right here. If I say hello, the person who is waiting in the waiting room will see a speech bubble pops up. I will see a message from the teacher, but as a person in the waiting room, I cannot chat back regardless of the settings of the chat. This is a one way communication from the host of the meeting to the person in the waiting room. So why don't we go ahead and admit the person from the waiting room. Now the mock student joined the meeting, both my microphone and my video have been disabled. If I try to unmute myself, I won't be able to do that. Now, with regards to the video, while my video has been turned off from the beginning of the session, I can still turn it on. The video will, be, will start capturing my webcam or whatever camera I have on my device. And there's no way for you as a host to disable that from the beginning of the session. The only way you can turn off the camera of the participant for the duration of the meeting is when they turn on their camera, you will need to click on manage participants, look for the people who have their camera on, you will see a camera icon, that means this student has a camera on, click more, stop video. Once you've done that, uh, my camera is now off and if I click and start video, I won't be able to do that because host has stopped or disabled it. 
So now my microphone is muted and I cannot mute, I unmute myself and my video has been disabled as well. When I click on share content, I won't be able to share anything. When I click on participants, I can still use nonverbal feedback. Nonverbal feedback appears right here. And now as a host, I can decide if I want to unmute this person, I can click unmute and now this person will be unmuted. If I mute this person again, I, as a student, I cannot unmute myself. Let's talk a little bit about chat. We did not disable chat in the Zoom setting, so the chat is still available. If I click on more and click on chat as a student, I can still type something. But as a host, I can now disable the chat from my meeting settings. If I click on chat and on these three dots, I can select no one will be able to chat. And as you can see, the chat has been disabled for the students. So now I cannot share. I cannot use chat. If I click on meeting settings, there's nothing here uh, that will cause disturbance to the classroom. As a host, I can now have total control over what is happening. If I go to manage participants, I can unmute this participant. If I click on more, I can ask to start the video. If I do that, then the student will be asked to start the video. If I click OK, my video is now on. If I click stop the video, this will stop the video from the participant. There's just one more thing I want to demonstrate to increase your control over the classroom once all the students joined your lesson uh, you can lock the session this will prevent anyone from joining your waiting room in the future click on manage participants more lock the meeting your meeting is now locked and no one will be able to get in there are some students who are late and you would like to let them in you can click on manage participants more and unlock your meeting another thing you can do during the meeting is click on this arrow next to share screen then advance sharing options and change who will be able to share the screen if for some reason you want your students to share the screen you know that these are all your students you recognize them you're in a safe environment now and you actually want them to share the screen you can click on all participants this will enable them to share their screen uh, again i personally encourage you to leave this on only host to minimize any risks of misbehavior i hope that now you are better equipped to run online lessons. Make sure that things don't get out of hand. If you have any questions about securing your Zoom lessons, leave them in the description and I'll try to get back to you within 24 hours. Thank you for staying till the end and I'll see you next time.